How to avoid the pitfalls of the Joe Biden economy. Mr. Reagan. Now, I don't talk about investing very often on this channel. I did once. I did once. When Elon Musk was going to be on Saturday Night Live and he kept on pushing Doge, I said, you know what? I think the hype is going to go up and up and up. And then when he gets on Saturday Night Live, I think Doge is going to crash. And that's exactly what happened. But I was tentative in suggesting anybody invest in anything because that's not my area of specialty. I don't have a special knowledge of investing. I have a special knowledge in politics. But things have gotten crazy lately. First, it was the gas prices, then inflation, everything's so volatile right now. I think it's like $17 per egg. You want to buy an egg? $17. So how do you do it? How do you navigate the Biden economy? Now, I, it's very important to me to improve the quality of life of every American. That's why I did this show. That's why I started this show. And in particular, of the subscribers of this show. Now, you guys have heard me advertise Noble Gold, like just about in almost every one of my videos, right? It's like my biggest uh, supporter, Noble Gold. They're, they're just a fantastic company. And who better to turn to for financial advice than the president and CEO of Noble Gold, Colin Plume? And I've actually got him, convinced him to come on the show and talk a little bit about the Biden economy. Welcome to the show, Colin. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and, and and I have two things I wanted to bring up before we get into that, that just what you were talking about sort of reminded me of. Uh, when you were talking about what happened with Elon Musk and the the social media trends and how these people can have influence, I think if there's a there's a YouTube show that it's called Dumb Money. And it's these three guys, I don't know if you've ever seen it, it's really interesting. And they've built this huge stock portfolio and all they do is they watch tr Twitter, they watch social media and they, they base their stock buys on these trends. So they'll like, they'll watch TikTok and they'll be like in Alabama, people buying the shoe. And this is true. I watched this video and they bought that shoe company and it went up. Uh, so like the idea that this, these people, Elon Musk, uh, Reddit and these things can can have an effect, and we you know yeah. we saw it with you know we saw it with AMC stock, you know the that GameStop the GameStop thing last GameStop, year, right? Yeah, we saw that with GameStop. So it, it it is a real thing that you know these these micro investors, so to speak, or these day trader investors can move the markets, and it's it's really something that's changed the dynamic of the stock market. And so it is really, really fascinating. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to go on your show, though, I, I will tell you is that, but when Ronald Reagan was in office, he actually wanted to go back on the gold standard. It was one of the things that he felt very strongly about. And it was talked about. And if you read his book, and if you read stories about it, he felt like we were going to go into, you know, unparalleled inflation, uh, mm -hmm. which we did. And, and it had a lot of inflation during his time in office, which obviously he was the receiver of. But I, I think that um, it, it is interesting that Reagan believed in having a gold standard. And I think in today's world, now that you know, people are starting to feel this inflation that, you know, eggs cost $16 for a dozen. And, you know, you have this crazy inflation. It's it's sort of interesting that he wanted to do that 40 years ago and was was basically talked out of it by his um, his financial advisors and, and whatnot. They sort of talked him out of, of doing that. Now, I don't know if we could go back on a full gold standard at this point, but maybe partially backing it by gold would have would have helped us. And, and, and obviously in this day and age, when inflation is so rampant, so many countries are getting away from our currency. It could have been something that really, really could have helped us. And there's a lot of talk about other places in the world going going on a gold standard. I, I, Iran mm -hmm. and Russia are coming up with a gold-backed cryptocurrency that they're going to issue pretty soon here. Um, so there, there are places in the world that they want to get back by gold again uh, so that they can slow down this just unbelievable uh, inflation machine that we've created. That's a, that's a fascinating idea, a gold a gold standard basis for a cryptocurrency would do you think that that would actually be a more stable currency than say like the US dollar absolutely i think it would be the most stable uh cryptocurrency and i think it would have because the problem with with you know listen i have a, a cryptocurrency um software trading platform called my digital money and it's the safest place right now to to put you know all these other companies are struggling we we have our overhead is next to nothing. We are partnered with a trust, equity trust. They have $40 billion in assets. 
The cryptos are held in the trust. We have a very safe, we're kind of the, the if we could go far opposite of FTX, we are the far opposite of, of <laughs> right, right, right. And I would say that the big problem with, with most cryptos is the momentum and the ability to just manufacture them to the end of the world, right? And we're seeing it right now, and, and not to go too far, but we're seeing it with Bitcoin now because it has a limited supply, really start to take off again, right? It's starting to move and it's you know in the $20,000 range. So I think the problem with all the cryptos in essence is just the ability to just completely manufacture them and continue to make them over and over, mm -hmm. which doesn't create any uh, sustainable value. I think that's the sort of the biggest issue uh, with a lot of cryptocurrencies is how do you know what the bottom is? How do you know the right. true value? Um, so yeah, backing there, there are a few other cryptos backed by gold, but obviously this one from Iran and Russia would be, uh, I, I think very desirable. Uh, obviously Russia has other reasons that they want to issue this because they can't trade and barter in, 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 you know, us right. treasury. Because Money. of the war. Yeah. And the embargo. The war war. So they have another reasoning why they want to do that, but uh, at the end of the day, I think there will be some some demand for it. And, you know, Russia holds a lot of gold. I think they're the fifth or sixth largest holder of gold in the world, somewhere in that range between China and Russia. It's pretty close. So they, they could, you know, create a, a crypto that would have some some stability. Um, but it but it always with these fiat monies, it always comes back to gold. I mean, mm -hmm. Zimbabwe, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever seen. Oh, I have it right here. I have this. I forgot I have this. So this is a. 100 trillion dollar um uh note from zimbabwe 100 trillion dollars yeah so this currency was around from i think 2001 to 2008 and they just you know they kept spiraling and 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 now there's a 100 trillion dollar uh no and i always i when i think of inflation i always look at this and remind myself obviously they made it very beautiful just to entice people too yeah, how much is that worth do you think in u.s dollars Oh, this is I maybe mean, like maybe a dollar or something. Maybe this is like <laughs> this is fun. This is only for fun. It's like know? Weimar Germany, you know, like yeah, it's like it's like you got this that's worth a dollar now is worth something. And then you got you know this is silver. This is a real. This is a you yeah. know old silver coin. This is worth you know a hundred dollars. I mean, it's look you know look at that. Look how yeah. small this is. It's not even an ounce of silver. It's worth a hundred hundred dollars. It's a you know, it's a rare silver coin. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. But, and actually, I've heard you talking about like uh, your, your passion about um, the First Amendment, freedom of speech, this sort of right. thing. So you know, sometimes when people market their companies on a show like mine, it's just because I have subscribers, right? It's not because they necessarily believe in the messages that I'm presenting. Um, but, you know, I, I believe in Martin Luther King's vision of, look, not at the color of one's skin, but the content of one's character. I believe in the First Amendment. I believe in all of these things. Right. And I, I've heard you talking in interviews about this yourself. And you, it's not just that you're uh, advertising on shows that have subscribers. You're advertising on shows that you believe in. A hundred percent. And I will tell you, uh, I've ridden the wave of the censorship that that people have gone through, uh, like everybody else, and I've seen people get kicked off certain platforms, and you know, go on to other ones. And I've, for the most part, st I mean, I have influencers I've been with five, six, seven years. Um, I I ride the wave, and I believe in this in this way of getting information. I think that this is mm -hmm. this is where things are going. I think that the trust of the media is is has gone far away, and. Just the speed that you can come up, you can watch something, come up, get your, get your data and get it out there so much faster. So mm -hmm. there's a multitude of reasons. But yes, I'm a big supporter of, of the First Amendment. And that's a big reason that I, you know, I've had, you know, big, big following, been been in the influencer world for a long time is just because I, I, I think this is how people people should get their information. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching my shows and you're like, oh, not an another Noble Gold ad, just know that this guy is a good man. Colin Plume, good man. Noble Gold, a solid company. Um, I wanted to talk about the Biden economy, but since we got into crypto and we started talking about, you know, all, all these kind of like alternative investments and stuff now, what do you think about the FTX thing? What's your take on that? Well, from someone that has a, a platform and, and we, you know, my digital money is our, our platform and you can do crypto with us and, and sort of in a way do the same thing. Now they had more coins than us and some fancier features and they had a big lending platform, which obviously proved to be a disaster. 
Um, I, I, I could see how they were going to go out of business because of what they were spending. Um, it, it's, you know, marketing and getting your name out there is one thing, but uh, for a new two, three year organization to put your name on, you know, the Miami heat, uh, uh, you know, built, you know, to put it on the stadium, uh, to do a, um, to do a, a commercial for the Super Bowl, um, you know, it's outrageous. I mean, it is absolutely outrageous. Um, do you know how much just to, like, I'll give you an example, just to do a regional ad on the Super Bowl in Los Angeles? Do you know, uh, guess what that would cost? Just in Los Angeles. Well, I mean, I mean, it's the Super Bowl, you said, right? Yeah, there's going to be a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. But think about it. you know they say like five six seven eight million like what what do you think it add on the on the Super Bowl? And I don't even want to guess. I don't. It's it would be crazy. I mean, I even studied advertising in school, and I wouldn't even yeah. want to guess at that. That's it's I mean, it seems crazy. Four point two million dollars. Four point two million. Okay, that's just the that's local. Just, you're talking about local, just L A. L A. That's just L A. Just to do it. Dallas is eight hundred thousand dollars. Um, I mean, I mean, even small places like, you know, I, you know, I was looking at like, I was just curious what these, I just wanted to take a look at this stuff. So anyways, this guy FTX was just blowing money everywhere. I mean, did the Super Bowl ad, he got Larry David. I mean, they said to produce the ad, it cost him 30 million. It was more money to actually do the ad. That was probably another 10 or $15 million. So he was in $40 million. And, you know, they were proclaiming zero fees. I don't know if you ever went to their platform. They, they don't charge any fees, this and that. I guess if you're stealing money, you don't need to charge fees. No, that's know. right. Yeah, you just take the money that people are investing. I, no, I'm not, I don't want to make fun of it because it's, it's awful. I feel, I feel, you know, horrible for those. But to... Uh, Everyone it, who lost money, yeah, we obviously are very sympathetic. It's awful. I mean, it's absolutely awful. Um, but, you know, anytime someone says they're not charging fees, you have to be a little skeptical and... Mm. and you know, they were a three-year-old company. I mean, that at the end of the day, they were they were new. As much as he had this big name, they were a, they were a new company, a kid, and and um, you know, the whole thing is is a, is a disaster. Uh, you know, and and but you know, as you've seen, Bitcoin f- from all that is, is still risen up. There's still other cryptos that have gone up, so it hasn't it hasn't crushed. You know, you would think of. Uh, you know, a Madoff like scam would have would have potentially crushed the market. And there's been a bunch of last year. I mean, there was multiple exchanges. I think, well, there's like 12 or 15 exchanges that went under. Um, you would think that they, you know, this would be the time that that crypto would fall apart. But it seems to seems to be holding on. OK, so. Yeah. Well, so. from your from your perspective, how much of this do you think was negligence and just inexperience and like completely just not knowing what these guys are doing? I mean, they just didn't know what they're doing. How much of it do you think was like knowingly conning people out of money and just 140 percent? I think that they knew, and I'll tell you why. You have you have this channel, right? And you look at your expenses, mm-hmm. and you look at your profit, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. This guy, he never looked at any of that. He never looked at any of that. He never looked like what business. Is first of all running on on Excel, which they were running on, but they and QuickBooks, I think, but they never looked at their their profit and loss. They never looked at their expense. He never looked. So how would how did he know he was profitable? How did he know that he could buy all these houses? Right. He didn't know, and he didn't care. Yeah. So that's why the, they should throw this guy to jail forever. And and uh, and they should they should they should throw away the key on this on this guy. There's no he cannot claim ignorance. Anyone that and by the way, I mean, he went to a pretty big school. I think he went to Dartmouth or one of these schools. I mean, they didn't they didn't teach him like you got to look at a PL, you got to look at expenses. Like, come on, he, he knew what he was doing. Right. And uh, and they should throw the book at him. He's, he's uh, one of the worst people on earth, in my opinion. <laughs> That's a, that is a bold statement, but I like it. I like it. Let, let's let's move on to just the economy in general. What's your quick take on what's going on right now with these, you know, I mean, everything seems completely insane. Why do you think that the market's so volatile? Why do you think everything's going crazy? And do you, are you optimistic, are you pessimistic about the near future? Well, I mean, I think that there's like what you see and then what's happening behind the scenes, right? So 
I mean, in essence, we're at war, right? Any way you want to look at it. You're talking about like with China. Well, no, if you, with with helping the Ukraine, right? And I'm not saying it's not. Oh, right. you mean you mean you mean yeah? We're we're involved in a war. Yes, yeah. we're involved in a war. Where we are, you can't tiptoe your way in, right? Like, are we going to just stop? We're sending troops over there to to train them how to use uh, weapons. We're sending you know fifty, sixty, a hundred, two hundred billion dollars. I mean, we're we're already at war. The second thing is is that we're in a recession. Big companies are laying people off. Google just had a big layoff. Uh, I don't know how many people they laid off last night. A lot of companies are cutting back on advertising. I mean, people are nervous right now. So I think this year is going to be a very bumpy year uh, overall for the economy. Now, will they lower interest rates this year? Will they will they try to spark the economy before the elections? I think they will. I think interest rates are coming back down. I think at the end of this year, we're back in the fours. I don't know if we get back to the you know two and a half or two and three quarters you know anytime soon, but we're definitely coming back. They're going to try to spark the economy in this year, and I think inflation is already coming down. People are people are seeing that. Part of it is is just things have opened back up. I mean, we finally caught up from COVID. Things are moving quicker. The used car market is not as crazy anymore. I mean, all these things that people were overpaying for. Are, the prices are starting to come down. A lot of the day-to-day items, unfortunately, have not, like eggs and a lot of these things that we need to survive have really skyrocketed. And that's that's the scary part about it. But if you look at gold last year and silver, they were the best performing out of the major asset classes out of anything. There was nothing that performed better out of the big ones, uh, you know, the S&P, the Dow, real estate. There's nothing that performed better than gold. And I think it's partly because we are moving into a war and people tend to get more conservative when those things are happening. Inflation was really high. Uh, and the demand for gold is coming from unprecedented places. I mean, even Bank of America thinks that gold's going to be on fire for the next three years. They just came out. The uses for gold have skyrocketed in, in medical technology and heart monitors. And the uses for gold have really, really gone up a lot. Um, and then, you know, silver, not only is it more affordable, but it's just used in everything. There's nothing, all the technology, uh, all the data centers, all that, they need silver, not, and then it's solar panels and electric, I mean, you, you go down the list, it's it's unbelievable how much silver we need. So I think that the, they're gonna, I think they're gonna lower interest rates at the end of this year. I, I don't think we're gonna get out of recession anytime soon. I think it's gonna probably be mid to end of next year before things you know open up a little bit. Cause I think the lower interest rates, people will get more aggressive. People are just, they're afraid right now. They're holding off. Uh, so I, I think we're we're in it uh, for for at least another year and a half, maybe two years. I think it's going to be pretty rough here in the U.S. Wow, but. wow. Well, you know, it's interesting because you actually touched on a lot of the points that I was going <laughs> to ask you about already. It is interesting, like you know, because I learn a lot about you know gold and silver actually from doing my ads. This is kind of funny. Like you guys give me some ad copy and I read it and I'm like looking this stuff up and I'm thinking. It's it is crazy that precious metals have outperformed like every other investment class, like everything else. Yeah, and and I think that everybody knows right now you got to make seven to ten percent just to just to keep up with inflation right now. So I think everybody's looking for that return, that safe return, and um, you know with with this potential war that we're getting into, with with all the the, the cutbacks. I think people are going to be really conservative this year, and I think gold is is it makes a lot of sense for the for the conservative um, investor. Well, thank you for your expertise. I'm happy to know you. I'm happy to know somebody who knows about this stuff a heck of a lot more than I do. Uh, if somebody wants to get involved with gold and silver, wants to get involved with Noble Gold, what is the best way for them to do that? Uh, do you uh, suggest just going to the website? Uh, no, I would say call. That's typically the best. 877-646-5347. Because you know, my team, they know a lot about gold and silver. And yeah, you're going to get our guides and our emails and a lot of educational. But you may just have a quick question about a coin or what do we sell or why or what whatever it is and i think it's easier to just get that question answered uh with a live person everyone here is in the us um everybody's you know friendly and it's not a high pressure uh organization i mean we're we're in it for the long haul we're family run business so um you know anyone that's looking to just get educated i would say just call and, and get the information and then you know decide if if it's right for them 
One of my very first jobs when I was younger, I was selling cell phones for a major carrier. And uh, I learned very quickly that don't don't push people into buying something. Just just talk to them about it. Just educate them. And if it's right for them, they'll 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 want to be involved with it. And yeah. so I really respect your, uh, your 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 strategy there, just to talk to people and educate them. I think it's the only way to go. I, I think it's a long term relationship, and um, I think that people make their own decisions. And and also these this, these financial decisions are never typically made by one person. Usually there's a wife or a husband or there's kids, and so you gotta talk to them and see what what they want to do. Yeah. So yeah, if anybody's looking to get information, uh, I would say the best thing to do is give us a call. Phone number is eight seven seven six four six five three four seven, and just get your question answered. Get some free information. Get educated. Uh, learn about something a little different, and um, you know, and that's I think that's the most important thing is to learn, to see what's out there, see different investments, and then. If it's right for you, great. If not, then then you got some free information, which is also great. Well, I cannot thank you enough for coming on the show. Hopefully, some people learn some things and they feel a little bit more comfortable with the Biden economy, which is, I think, mildly terrifying. All right, guys. Well, that is it for the show today. And remember, it is not that our liberal friends are ignorant. It's just that they know so much that is not so. Good night. What is fascism? Fascism is private ownership, private enterprise, but total government control and regulation. Well, isn't this the liberal philosophy? The conservative, so-called, is the one that says, less government, get off my back, get out of my pocket, and let me have more control of my own destiny.